Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Now, recently we bought a couple of lasers and I've been playing around with this light burn software. Now, I'm a beginner at this, I admit, but I think that I've come up with um, enough knowledge that I can put this video out here and maybe help somebody to solve this little mystery that revolves around these things here, this living hinge. So stick with me. Let's get on that computer and I'll show you how you do this how you program in Lightburn to make yourself a living hinge. Let's flip around and get to the computer. Okay, as I said, I'm learning this software myself, but I'm pretty confident that I can show you how to do this and how to pull this off. Uh, as I always say, there's more than one way to do these programmings, and this is the way that I've been doing it, and it seems to work well for me. So let's jump right in here. First thing you're gonna wanna do is grab the square tool, and this is going to be a basic square that we are going to create, no particular size. I do like to use an even number for the height. So in this case, we're at 60 millimeters. That's good. Let's click out of that. Let's pop it into the center with the P so we can get to the center. And the next step is to grab the square tool once more, hover over the edge and create a square from top to bottom, a rectangle, not a square. Don't worry about the size at this point. We're gonna adjust it up here. Make sure this lock is turned off. We know that the box is 60 inches tall. That's exactly what we want, 60 inches. Inches, we're working in millimeters, 60 millimeters, sorry folks. But this number here is gonna be important. We want this number to be 1.5 millimeters. Hit enter, come down here. As you can see, we now have a 1.5 millimeter wide box. If we click off of it, it is there. We click back on it one more time to activate it. The next step is to go to our um, node editor. I'm sorry, that's not correct. While this is lit and active, right click, convert this to path down here where it says convert to path. Then go to your node editor, zoom into the top. You've got a line going across here, closing the box. Hover over that line and push D. That will delete that section between this node and that node. Let's roll down to the bottom and do the exact same thing. Hover over it and click D. Now you no longer have a box, you have two lines, and that is exactly what we want. So in order to create the actual hinge, we need to cut this thing loose and, and delete some portions of this so that it'll actually create you know the hinge, you've got to section this wood enough to make it flexible. So in order to do this, I like to use the grid that's behind the box and I use it as a rough idea, rough number. If you hover over the inside line and we'll use a half of a box, a full box, and we'll hover right here, pushing I on the keyboard, we'll insert a node. Go down to the bottom and do the same thing, the same distance, half a box, one full box, enter a node, hover over the bottom node between this node and that node, hover in between and push D. That deletes that section, do the same thing on the top, push D. There's the back side of the hinge. Now the front side of the hinge, we also need to enter some nodes. We want to have just a little bit of material between this cut and the edge of this cut. So enter a node here, go down to the bottom and the same thing on this end down here, enter a node roughly here. Then we should be able to delete this section, hovering, clicking the D, click off of your lines and you now have the basis for the living hinge. So let's highlight them all again, get them all active. Now what we're going to do is go over to the Array tool over here, click Array, slide this guy over just a little bit so you can see what's happening here. We want to maintain the width at 1.5 millimeters right here, total width 1.5 millimeters. Columns is what we're going to increase. We're not worried about the Y side, just the X side in this case. And as we push up the numbers, number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as you can see, we're creating that hinge. And you 
would continue to increase the number of rows or arrays, however you want to say it, until you achieve the distance that you're looking for. And you would draw a line on your box on each side and you would fill that cavity or that space with the number of arrays that was needed to create the living hinge. Once you're satisfied with that, click OK. What I like to do is make them all active and group them. Let's click off of it now and back out. And as you can see, we have indeed a living hinge. Now let's say you wanted to add a second set of hinges over here. Pretty simple. Click on this. You can copy and paste one over here. You can ungroup. Click on the first two lines, like so. You could copy, you could drag them over. Set them wherever you need to begin the next hinge. And begin again with the array tool. Increasing the number of arrays until you have achieved the hinge that you're looking for once more. Click off. Let's highlight these again. Group those. Click off. Highlight these again. And group those. And that's basically all there is to a living hinge in its most basic form. There's other forms using diamonds and triangles and all sorts of shapes. We're not going to go into that here. The premise of this video is to teach you all how to do a living hinge so that you can come up with that squiggly wood. As always, I hope you've got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly hope you learned something from it. Please give us a like, a share, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. As always, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.